Hey guys, I wanted to introduce today's video. Today's topic is actually something that's near and dear to my heart, but not so near and dear to Bridget. Bridget and I have been good friends for several years, and this is not something that um, we necessarily agree on or see eye to eye on. And that's great, you know, friends should be different in some respects. So we're a lot alike in some ways and very different in others. So today's topic is about exercise. I love exercise, but let me explain that because it, it sometimes intimidates people when I tell them this. I'm a fitness instructor, but like you wouldn't necessarily know it to look at me. I'm not one of those, oh, I want to kill myself. I want to look like a bodybuilder. I want um, to be a big CrossFitter. I don't have anything against any of those things. Those just aren't my jam. I like to move and I like to help people move. And what I tell people is you've got to find some form of physical activity that you enjoy um, because exercise should actually energize you, not deplete you. And what do I mean by that? It should be something that you look forward to. Um, a lot of people think, oh, exercise has to be super intense. Exercise is just moving your body. It could be gardening. It could be cleaning your house. If cleaning houses is your jam and you're in the Lexington, Kentucky area, let me know because that is not something I enjoy. And you're more than welcome to come and clean my house to get your exercise. And for me, I love to dance. I love yoga. I also like some weightlifting, but not a lot. Like I don't really enjoy the machines at the gym, but I like, like once a week I teach a barbell class and we use barbells and hand weights. And I really enjoy that. It's set to music. So that really literally pumps me up. I love dancing. I just feel free and young and um, it's just fun for me. Other people hate it. It makes them feel uncomfortable. So if you hate it and it makes you feel uncomfortable, don't do it. Something that I don't enjoy that a lot of people are like super obsessed with is spinning or a stationary bike. I don't get it. They play music. If they play music, I want to dance. I don't want to be stuck on a bicycle. My husband loves outdoor cycling. Um, I, I like cycling outside. I like to enjoy it, but I don't like to go fast. I, I like to just kind of tool around, look at things and enjoy being outside in the sun. He likes, has one of those fancy bikes where he leans forwards and I don't know. Bridget's husband does it too. It just doesn't seem fun to me. It seems super intense and like it's not, they don't have a very comfortable seat. <laughs> um, I just don't like it. Uh, so I don't do it. And so if you told me that's what I'd have to do for exercise, like I wouldn't be super excited about it. But tomorrow morning I teach a dance class. I look forward to it. Um, and my participants look forward to it because we make it fun. It's fun for us, might not be fun for you. So my encouragement for you is to find something that you do enjoy. And it can be walking a dog. If you don't have a dog, you can borrow mine. <laughs> you can you can borrow other people. Other people want to have their dogs walk, but they're too busy. So that might be something you can do and actually make a little money doing it. it. It doesn't have to be super strenuous. It doesn't have to be super intense. Um, it just needs to be something that you will do regularly. And it doesn't even have to be the same thing. Maybe you take a square dancing class or um, you take a fencing class or... Maybe you're into martial arts. Um, I've taught Tai Chi. Um, so that it could be something that, you know, just gentle, gentle, slow movements. Um, one of my passions is working with senior citizens. Most of the fitness classes I teach e each week are geared towards senior citizens. Um, I love those because I know if I can get them to come regularly, that they will see improvement in their health. A lot of the, the class, classes I teach are actually taught in a seated position, like most of their classes in, in a chair, but they still get benefit from them because it's regular, consistent exercise. So um, I'll let Bridget talk a little bit more on the video, but I just want to encourage you to find something that you enjoy. Um, just like when we talk about the keto diet or the keto lifestyle, like there's a whole range. Like some people are super strict keto. Some people are lazy keto. Some people drink ketones. Some people fall somewhere in between. It's the same with exercise. Like if you like super intense CrossFit classes and marathon running, like do it. Um, if you want to do gentle yoga, do it. If you want to take dance class, do it. If you just want to walk in your neighborhood or take the stairs instead of the elevator, park further away when you're going to a restaurant or a store, like do it. Just make sure that you're consistent in moving your body every day in some way. And research has actually shown that small bursts of Activity, like 10 minutes at a time, can actually be more effective than an hour-long workout. So don't feel like it has to take a big chunk of your time. Um, if you're taking your kids to a dance class, go outside, walk around while they're in dance. Or if your kids are taking a class or something at the YMCA, 
then sign up for a class while they're busy doing that. Um, if your kids are at basketball practice, volunteer to be like an assistant coach. I, I helped coach volleyball for two years. I never played. You wouldn't want to see me play. I'm, I'm not very good at it. But I could, I could help the head coach with discipline and keeping the kids focused and encouraged and um, stretching. Um, so there are lots of ways that you can, can be a little bit more active without spending a lot of money or time. So anyway, I talked probably more than Bridget will, will about exercise. Maybe we should reverse who introduces it and who talks about it. But my encouragement for you is just to find something that you enjoy or multiple things that you enjoy or take time to take different classes and expose yourself to different activities. It might not be something that you stick with, but it, it's fun to shake things up and to challenge yourself mentally and physically. Um, maybe take up tennis or golf, um, a sport that you can continue to enjoy even as you age. So I hope this helps and I can't wait for you to watch Bridget's portion of the video and get our different perspectives. All right, keto on. We're, we're the Keto, keto sisters. sisters. I'm Bridget. And I'm Rebecca. And we're here to share with you our recipe for abundant life. Doing the keto lifestyle can be hard by yourself. So we have created a community of people that will support each other. We're gonna show you small changes made consistently can have a huge impact. Right, can you imagine cookies without baking soda or salt? Add, Add some, some teamwork. teamwork. And then we sweeten our group with encouragement. Good job, Bridget. Thanks. Fat is an important part of the keto lifestyle, and it's really what makes that lifestyle unique. In the same way, grace is an important part of our community and really makes the keto system extra special. Another important part of our community is that we lead with education, or education. And our community would not be complete without a little bit of fun and a little bit of nutty. And although our Keto Sisters community is based on friendship and grace, we also add a little heat to help you become the best version of yourself. Life, like cookies, is best enjoyed together. Welcome to day six. Um, this is our last day of new content for the um, low carb week. So next week we will start our high fat week and then the third week is macros. So I feel like, you know, I've kind of covered as much as I want to on um, low carbs. It's just kind of a matter now of actually eating low carb and I think we're kind of getting the hang of tracking it. So next week we'll start tracking our fat as well. Some people are already doing both, um, but as a group we will start doing um, the tracking of low carb and high fat next week. Um, so what I wanted to talk about today is exercise. Now you might have noticed I got a little passionate in the video yesterday. Um, that was a topic that I absolutely love and could talk about for a really long time. Exercise is a topic that I am less passionate about. I'm just gonna be like fully, um, full disclosure here. So exercise is something that I know that I should do, right? We all know that diet and exercise is very important um, to our health. We're gonna feel better if we have a good diet and if we exercise, we all know this. Um, for me, truthfully, where I am right now is I exercise probably four, four or five times a week, but I'm a casual exerciser. I like to walk, I like to swim laps, and it's just to make my body feel good. It's not fast, it's not competitive at all. Um, I occasionally play volleyball. It's just very kind of low key things. However, you know, I talked yesterday about the power of words and um, setting goals. So one of my goals is I realized that if you think back to about the four different ways that your body can create ketones, um, obviously the keto diet, intermittent fasting, which we're gonna talk about next week, um, drinking ketones or exercise are ways that you can create ketones. And I realized for me, I'm always pushing myself to be a little bit better. I'm awesome at drinking ketones. I'm pretty good at intermittent fasting. I'm getting better with the keto diet and exercise is the area that I'm personally going to be working on, um, improving myself. And a way that I have, um, am striving to improve myself is I have signed up for a 5k, um, in a couple months. And so I have started the couch to 5k program. Um, and it is a stretch for me, but I always want to grow myself. And because I have fallen in love so much with what ketones do for my body, I'm like, you know what, if I'm really tapping into the three ways that my body can create ketones or get ketones as a gift through drinking them, um, why not go ahead and maximize the fourth way? So there are multiple studies, you know, that show that if you are doing the keto diet and you're exercising along with it, that is just going to maximize your ketone um, production. Um, I also, in the email today, I will send a, um, a pretty nice little analogy that um, is really cool for 
thinking about like elite athletes. If you think about like long marathon runners, a lot of times they will um, kind of do like the goose or the sugar or the like sugar pills. You know, for so long, the thinking has been like you have to constantly be putting carbs into your body because you're burning through them and you're gonna give yourself that quick fuel source. Um, but what's ironic is that your entire body is filled with, with fat that can be turned over into ketones and used for fuel. Um, so it's a, it's a nice little analogy. Check it out in the email about how it's funny that we give ourselves that quick fuel if we're like a, you know, an elite runner. Um, I'm not, when I say we, I don't really mean me. <laughs> um, but it's funny to use that quick fuel when you have like fuel that could last you for days already just in your body stored up ready to be used as ketones. Um, more elite athletes are starting to um, realize that ketones are a better fuel source. Um, I have several CrossFitters that I work with, um, with the keto drink and the keto diet, and they um, are more and more, they're starting to see that that is a better fuel source for them. So if you Google, you'll see a lot of different, um, you know, really, um, kind of more impressive athletes that are out there that are starting to, this ketone conversation is taking off and more and more people are starting to realize. Um, one of my daughters played cross country for a few years and I was amazed that they still did pasta parties the night before every race. Um, and trying to be a good mom, I hosted one of the pasta parties, but the whole time just seeing them all eating breadsticks and um, pasta and cookies like, and then like this much salad on their plate. I was like, oh, they, we've got it so backward, but I try not to be the weird, crazy mom who talks about ketones to everyone. If my kids heard me saying this, they would say I'm not very successful. <laughs> um, anyway, so often we think about the keto diet as a way to lose weight, but some of the other benefits that we don't talk about as much is that it helps with inflammation. Um, it helps with your lean muscle mass. Um, of course, energy, endurance, all those things that are helpful if you are an athlete um, or if you're just doing like, you know, moderate exercise. Even um, in the Keto Bible, Dr. Stephen Cunane um, did a study that found that even if you walk 10,000 steps a day, it helps with your ketone production and it actually helps with your ketone production in the brain. It helps, it, you have brain benefits from the ketones produced just from walking every day. And I don't wanna say just, but to me, I feel like sometimes when I'm walking, like, oh, this isn't the greatest exercise, but it has huge benefits. So all of that to say that, again, wherever you are, I want you to challenge yourself. Like um, for today, we're just gonna be like taking kind of inventory of where are we with our exercise. If you never exercise, Maybe you get a Fitbit and, um, this is not a Fitbit, that's a hair tie. <laughs> maybe you get a Fitbit and you start tracking your steps and maybe if you are have a pretty sedentary life, maybe you try for 3,000 steps a day. Do whatever it is that is gonna push you a little bit to be maximizing all the hard work that you're doing with the keto diet by putting some exercise in there as well. Maybe you already are exercising six days a week and you're crossfitting and exercising for an hour a day keep up the good work. <laughs> Let us know that in the comments. You probably don't get bragged on enough. In the comments of today's video, I want you to kind of say where you are with exercising. There is a lot that comes from the power of words. Just like yesterday, I talked a little bit about that. Um, there is a lot with words. And so that's why I'm speaking that I'm going to do a 5k that I'm going to do better with my, um, with my exercise. So in the comments below, say where you are, some helpful tips, where you wanna be, what your goals are. Um, if you use a Fitbit or you have some kind of a trick for like walking or doing some exercise that might be um, motivational for other people, please put that in the comments as well. And last night I posted a, um, a poll for you to vote on a time for day seven, on um, day seven, 14 and 21, instead of doing a pre-recorded video, I do a live Q and A. Um, a lot of times people will post questions in the group and I get to them as I can, but I know sometimes I miss some um, or maybe don't give a very thorough explanation. So I will go back through and kind of look and try to find some of those questions, especially if I didn't give a great answer to it. But if you have other questions or you wanna remind me of questions that you've asked, Below the um, poll last night, not the one that you vote that you did your um, assignment yes or your challenge yesterday. This is a separate one that looks a little bit different. And I put some times for you to vote on what times might work for you for day seven that worked for me as well for me to do the live Q&A and then pop your questions below there. I did it late last night. Um, 
and then I'm looking forward to tomorrow not having this up in the morning. Everything else will look the same. You'll still get an email. You'll still do your um, you know, survey in the evening to get your point, but we'll do a live Q&A instead. So let me know what's a good time for you if you want to hop on there and catch it live. Um, hope you have a great day today. Thanks. Bye.